In this video, I'll be sharing 10 essential tips to enhance your video editing skills in the CapCut video editor. Whether you're a pro user or just getting started, these tips will undoubtedly boost your efficiency and quality of editing. Stick around if you want to elevate your CapCut editing game. Tip number one is organizing files for easy access. Sometimes when you are editing and you have plenty of media files, it's very unnecessary to keep scrolling up and down through all of them whenever you want to select every other item you want to use because they are all mixed up. So to make your work easier, all you have to do is select multiple files that could be grouped into one category. You can easily do that by holding down the control button and then selecting the files one by one. After you have selected all the files, right click and select the option, new folder with selected items. You can create as many folders as you wish. And whenever you want to open any of these folders, you just have to double click. Now, here is the best part. You can give each of the folders a name. Right click on the folder, select rename folder, and just give the folder a name. Doing this is going to speed up your editing workflow and save you a lot of precious time. Tip number two. If you work with videos where you have to remove backgrounds and add some effects behind them just like this, there's a better way to do this which is going to save you time and make your work faster and easier. Assuming I want to create something like this with this video, I would have to drag and drop my video into the timeline, duplicate the video clip, and then remove the background of the duplicate clip by selecting Cut Out and then Auto Cut Out. The more frustrating way to edit this video and add effects and elements behind the video is to start adding keyframes to the individual video clips and then trying to align them. You can already tell that this is going to mean a whole lot of work and effort. Sometimes scaling both clips to match properly would be very difficult, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on just trying to make sure that they are perfectly aligned. Instead of doing that, here is the easier way to do it. I'm going to delete both clips. I'll start by dragging and dropping the original video clip, add all the keyframes to the main video. What you're going to aim for is to make sure that all the motions and movements you want in the final video are made. Now that you've added all the keyframes, duplicate this video clip and then remove the background from the clip on top. As you can see, both clips are aligned perfectly and there will be no need for me to make any adjustments or start aligning them manually. So you can easily add your background elements and backdrop in between the layers. Tip number three. Still on the issue of background removal, although CapCut does a very good job of removing the background, sometimes it's not perfect. Take for instance this clip. If I deactivate the background layer, you'll notice that part of the foreground has been cut out. So if I was going to add elements between these two layers, it's going to be obvious that this area needs fixing. So here is what you're going to do. You can either resize and reposition all the clips to make sure that they don't get to the region, or you can use the mask tool to split the backdrop or background clip and just add a little bit of feather and you're done. Tip number four. We are still on the issue of working with clips that need background removal. Sometimes there would be a hard edge between the end of the main background video and the rest of the video. To create a seamless edge that's going to blend in with the rest of the video, you can use the mask tool to feather the edge of the main video in the background clip and also feather the backdrops to create a blend just like this. Tip number five is important if you edit very long videos. Looking at my timeline, you can see that there are a couple of video clips as well as audio clips. But watch what happens when I try to rearrange the video clips without selecting any of the audio clips at all. As you can see, the rearrangement of the video clips has messed up the arrangement of the audio clips. And you can guess how frustrating this could be if you are editing a very large video project with several dozen clips. So to make sure that this doesn't happen to you while you're editing, come to this panel, select this icon to turn off linkage, and now whatever you do to the video clips doesn't affect the audio. I also want you to bear in mind that turning on linkage could be very important in some cases, but you would have to know when to use it and when not to use it. If you must link a video to an audio clip so that whenever you adjust the position of one, it affects the position of the other, it's best to group them together just like I'll show you in the next tip. Tip number six is grouping clips and media items together. If you have an editing project that contains a lot of files and clips, to save yourself time when it comes to editing or rearranging some clips when you need to add or remove sections, it's best to group clips together so that when you make an adjustment to the position of one, you wouldn't have to repeat it for the others in that same group. The best part is that you can link as many clips as possible into the same group. 
Tip number seven is important if you're in the middle of editing, your computer starts lagging, and you need to speed up the timeline preview. In the video project, come over to the Modify button right here. The Project Settings panel will open up. Go to Performance and click on Proxy to turn it on. This is what it looks like if a proxy has been turned on for the video project. You can also go one step further to select a lower video resolution, and what this means is that if there is any video clip that is higher than your selected resolution, CapCut is going to convert and transcode it down to the set resolution for easier preview and playback in the timeline, but during export, this is not going to affect the final video quality or resolution. Tip number 8, similar to the previous one, is also a way to speed up your video editing timeline. If you have several elements and clips on several layers, depending on the type of computer you have, your editing workflow might begin to lag. To ensure a smoother playback, you are going to make a compound clip. But before you do this, make sure that you are not going to make any further amendments to these individual clips, and that they have already been arranged properly. What you have to do is select clips that you have put together in the same position on the timeline. After selecting the clips, right-click and select Create Compound Clip. Everything would be combined into a single clip on the timeline, and any amendments to this compound clip would affect all of the individual clips that have been added to it. You can also right-click this compound clip and select Pre-Process. This means that the preview would be processed once for that video project, and your computer doesn't have to process the playback every single time you want to preview your timeline. Tip number 9 is very important, and it has to do with using media placeholders to speed up your editing. Here is what I mean. Sometimes while editing, you may not have the right clip to add to the video project at that time. Now, here is what you have to do. Instead of pausing your workflow to search for that single clip instead, just throw in any random media in place of that actual clip and continue editing. Hopefully, when you come back to review your work, you can replace that random clip with the correct video clip. Personally, I have this card here, which is a placeholder. It's just an image. So, all I have to do is drag and replace the random video clip with this image and continue editing. If I somehow forget that I have some work left undone during playback, I'm going to easily spot this image and replace it with the actual clip that's supposed to be there. I also use a bright color to remind me just in case I forget. It's easy to spot this color on the timeline because it's bright, and as soon as I see this, I know that the portion needs fixing. Tip number 10 is working with keyframes in CapCut. If you have added some keyframes to a particular clip, by default, CapCut is going to apply animation between the keyframes linearly. But to create a smoother transition between these keyframes and to also manipulate some extra features about it, you can use curves, and here's how you do that. Right-click on the clip in the timeline, select Show Keyframe Animation, and you're going to see something like this. Right here in this panel, you can see the different keyframe properties which you have applied to the clips, and you can work on each of them individually. To create a smooth animation between these keyframes, you can use the preset graphs. Alternatively, you can create your own curve by expanding any of these properties, and then using the anchor points to edit the curves. You can do it however you want, and you can edit the graph to get what you need. So, those are 10 simple tips to help you edit better videos and faster in the CapCut video editor. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. To learn more about CapCut editing, I have made this playlist right here where you can check out other video tutorials on how to edit better videos with CapCut. Thank you for watching.